In the history of aviation, the vertical takeoff and landing or VTOL aircrafts have carved out a distinctive niche for themselves. However, there is only one modern operational VTOL aircraft in the entire world and that is the F-35B of USA. Ironically enough, another VTOL aircraft known as the British Sea Harrier has enthralled millions of aviation lovers a few decades ago. India had also procured several Harrier aircrafts in the 1980s. These aircrafts were operated from India's aircraft carriers namely INS Vikrant and INS Virat. Since only a handful of countries boasted Harriers in their arsenal, they were greeted with much fanfare. Back in the days, these aviation marvels also guest starred in many major Hollywood productions, further skyrocketing their stardom. Despite all the adulation, the impact of Harrier aircrafts on the forefront was, at the best, mediocre. Within a few decades, these airplanes went obscure. India too decommissioned them by 2016. Adding insult to injury, Britain also abstained from developing a modified generation of Harriers. What was the reason? What happened to India's Harriers? Keep watching the video to unravel this mystery. The role of aircraft in the battlefront became crystal clear during the Second World War. Both Allies and Axis powers shot thousands of tons of bombs over their enemy's territory. As a result, each side contemplated ways to counter their opponent's aircrafts. Landing strips and runways were regularly targeted and thereby preventing their aircraft from leaving the ground. Even small runways and adjoining hangars were pretty easy to spot from above and hence targeted. Even if a few aircraft survived the ambush, they were practically useless without an airstrip to launch them. Subsequently, a lot of effort was directed towards designing aircrafts that could take flight without large runways. Numerous projects were sanctioned by the US, the USSR and many European countries to develop novel technologies that could attain this objective. Even though they managed to design aircrafts that could be vertically launched with the help of a propeller, none of them could rival the speed or control of jet aircrafts. The first breakthrough was achieved by the British aircraft manufacturing companies Hawkers and Sidley, who designed a novel prototype based on one of their existing jet planes, the Hawker Hunter. The aircrafts were brought to life with state-of-the-art Rolls-Royce Pegasus engine. For conventional aircrafts, the lift generated by the wings of the plane assists in its takeoff from the runways. This is evidently not achievable in the case of VTOL aircrafts. As a result, the vertical takeoff in Harriers was achieved via four nozzles in Pegasus engine that generated powerful streams of air, thus providing thrust. Furthermore, the angle of the jet could also be adjusted so that the Harrier could go forward. And once the aircraft reaches a particular speed, the lift provided by the wings is more than sufficient for it to remain airborne. In the year 1960, the aircraft completed its first successful vertical takeoff. It was during that period when Britain was forced to cut back on its naval strength due to worsening economic situation. The fiscal climate made it impossible for them to maintain huge aircraft carriers and navy ships. Instead, Britain started focusing on developing small aircraft carriers that are affordable and easy to maintain. Along with it emerged the requirement of a plane that could operate within a small airstrip. This was the turning point that made Harrier jets invaluable to the British Royal Navy. With its VTOL feature and its ability to operate from small runways, it was the perfect solution for all their problems. However, along with all its merits, VTOL aircrafts come with a few shortcomings. Designed to take off vertically, they could not be burdened with excessive armaments or fuel. Hence, they were mostly deployed by utilizing ski jump ramp. Once Britain demonstrated that Harriers could be successfully operated from their light aircraft carriers, HMS Ark Royal 1963, other member countries of NATO also exhibited keen interest in these jets. As a result, a joint venture between US and Britain was formed, and a second generation of Harrier was developed. This aircraft addressed many inadequacies of the original Harrier. Soon after, Italy and Spain also acquired the novel Harrier II. Britain's Sea Harriers played a huge role in 1982 Falkland War. The conflict erupted when Argentina invaded the islands occupied by Britain. To counter this aggression, Britain sent their carrier task force led by their aircraft carrier HMS Hermes. British Harriers that flew off the carriers dealt severe blow to the Argentine forces. 
The war ended two and a half months later when Argentina withdrew from the island. In 1986, India procured HMS Hermes and after extensive refurbishments, recommissioned the vessel as INS Vikrant. Along with it, Indian Navy also took ownership of nearly 30 sea harriers. They proved to be formidable warriors that ensured air power for Indian fleet at sea. If needed, the sea harriers could deploy missiles and drop bombs upon the enemy shores. Their ability to refuel mid-air and engage air-to-air -air beyond visual range missiles made them extremely potent fighters. INS Vikrant and her cohort of sea harriers played a crucial role in the 1999 Kargil war as part of Operation Vijay. The task force ensured that a naval blockade of Pakistan's cargo ships was in place. By the time the war was over, Pakistan's reserve was reduced to just 6 days worth of oil. However, despite all the glory, it was very difficult to maneuver a harrier jet during vertical touchdown. As a result, accidents were common. Among the 25 odd harrier fighters owned by Indian Navy, more than half were destroyed due to accidents. Unfortunately, the mishaps also led to the death of seven IAF pilots. In fact, harriers turned out to be very much accident prone for other nations' navies as well. Moreover, it lacked the speed or weapon carrying capacity to be an effective interceptor. As spare parts were also becoming unavailable, the Indian Navy removed them from the service by 2016. Since the VTOL engine in Harrier had many technical limitations, Britain was not interested in developing the next generation of these fighters. Besides, the extra weight of the Pegasus engine, supersonic speeds, and the stealth were beyond this design. By then, the US had invited Britain to become a part of the Joint Strike Fighter program. This unique opportunity allowed Britain access to America's state-of-the-art technologies at a fraction of the cost. This partnership gave rise to a superior, more reliable F-35B VTOL fighter aircrafts. Britain plans to induct 138 F-35Bs to the Royal Navy in the near future. Meanwhile, India has procured INS Vikramaditya and 45 MiG-29K fighters from Russia. Hopefully, in the near future, the naval version of Tejas HAL. TEDBF would also join the ranks to further strengthen the Indian naval force.